Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good out there. So if you saw a video of mine a little while ago, I said about how I wanted to get some Auto Soul. It was a funny little video on the DR. Uh, was it on the DR? Doesn't matter. Anyway, I said in that video I was going to do a video about polishing stock pipes because I knew that up in the loft was my old XJ6 exhaust. Now, this video did not go to plan in any way, shape or form because when I got it down from there, it was bright orange. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. You know, I'll clean up this, I can clean it off. And then of course I realized that it was painted and I'm like, right, okay, well that means I'm gonna to need to repaint this, which means, means I'm gonna to have to buy some exhaust paint. And frankly, I'm pr probably never going to put this back on my bike. So why am I going to bother cleaning it all up, you know, and repainting it at the moment, spending money on stuff I don't need to spend money on, basically. Now that on the back end is close to what it was like. You can see if there's actually bobbling and all sorts going on here, uh, but it was way, way, way worse than that. I hadn't realized how bad it actually was. That you can see how bad it was from that in there because I haven't really got to it much. And I definitely advise you that if you take your stock exhaust off, you clean it before you put it into storage, especially if it's going to be in a garage where the temperatures mean that condensation can form and rust can continue even though it's not directly in wet. To this end, I'd want to sandblast this before I properly repainted it. And as I say, there is no point doing that because I'm not planning to do anything with it. Plus, where the ends of the head is going the bike, these little flanges where it all straps up against, these are mank. They are properly rusted out. Okay, yes, I could clean them up a bit, but they're still really bad. It's also got a big dent in it there, and I'm not entirely sure whether those two are supposed to be that offset from each other, but whatever, it doesn't matter, as I say. But then I was like, well, hang on a minute. I can still clean these up using basic methods. No har pick, none of that stuff. I think these are steel, although surprisingly, they haven't actually rusted. Let me just find my magnets. There they are. Um, that's steel as far as I'm concerned, because it is magnetic, but it hasn't rusted much. I mean, this bit did, but this never did. So what was it, like chromium coated or something? I don't know. I'm using basic things such as wire wall, WD-40, auto sole, some bits of rag and some elbow grease. I'm going to turn these old pipes into shiny new ones, which you can do on your bike. Now, obviously having them off the bike makes it massively easier. But what I will say here is that if you've got, got a particularly manky set and you're considering taking them off your bike and it's an inline four like this, keep in mind that very often the studs are going to snap and you'll have problems. To, well, if you're lucky, you'll just have to remove them and replace them. It won't be too bad. But sod's law, things can snap off and you can have some real issues. So doing it in place, if you don't want to start going down that road, is the better option. But of course, it's harder to do. You see, in places, they're not too bad. They definitely have a distinguished tonal difference here. Uh, but, oh, I mean, yeah, look at that. It'll be interesting to see what we can return on this inside. I'm just gonna do the pipes. I'm not gonna do the actual header ends or anything like that. Oh. Okay, this thing weighs. Now I remember why I took this thing off. Gee, well, also the sound, it sounds like a space bike. Definitely stick some gloves on for this, but hopefully when you order some, they didn't send you a size too small. So with just the wire wall and the WD-40, With the wire wall, you can actually feel and hear the sort of grittiness of where it's corroded on the surface. And over time, it becomes smooth as you get all those bits off. Do remember to turn your wire wall regularly because if you're using a fine grain, it's gonna get sort of softened and worn out quite quickly. Get back to the other side in a second. So using just WD-40 and a soft cloth,
but I've used just WD-40 and a soft cloth. As you can see, that's actually cleaned up quite nicely, but it's taken none of the discoloration off. Uh, so if they're not too bad, you know, that's a way of getting all the, getting the light surface rust and any of the gunk off. It doesn't matter how many times you go over that, it's not going to do anything. But while I will, way better. So the WD-40 on its own doesn't actually do too badly, uh, but on the majorly corroded bits it's not great, and the bits that are discolored like this you definitely need something to give a bit of abrasion, but it comes off quite easily. So back to the other side where I did the wire wall all over it, as you can see that's really cleaned that up. So now what I'm going to do is polish this one alone, and polish the other side alone, and see, I want to basically work out which stage is actually giving you the most return. This is a tip for when it's on the bike or not. If you use strips of cloth like cotton rags, and you go once around, get both ends, gives you the ability to polish the whole pipe in one go. And the tighter you pull, the harder it will grip down. But it won't let you get into the tightest of gaps. I really have not spent nearly as much time doing this as you probably would want to. If you're doing it to your bike, I just wanted to show what a difference you can make with some basic, uh, you know, bits and pieces, old sole, WD-40, some old rags, in a few minutes. Also note, a polished surface is less likely to rust than a non-polished surface. So this one has been wire wheeled and polished, but you know, as I've said, I'm, I'm not going to say half assed but there's only one cheek. It's actually starting to become a bit more mirrored. If you spent more time on that, you know, going over in a couple more passes of the polishing, you will get closer and closer to like a mirror finish. That, as I say, is just WD-40, wire wool, and some autosol. I want to do the other side now and see what just WD-40 and autosol can do, because I'm now questioning, can the autosol break down, or at least take off this, because it seems like it just needs a bit of extra abrasion. It might be possible. And on this side, I might actually get the rag through there. I want to see if it's, it can chemically remove it before I... Yeah. Okay, well, I'm now abrading it, to be fair. But... Mm, it is a little bit. It is coming off, and it, that wasn't a huge amount of friction for my thumb, so with a cloth, this might work. Ooh. Okay, with enough elbow grease, you can actually take off that discoloration with just the, the uh, autosol metal polish. This is WD-40 wiped down and then auto sole. It's not bad, but it has still got some, some little marks and some more crusty pieces of rust that won't come off very easily. But if you're not being too much of a perfectionist, it actually polishes up very close to the extra effort of going through wire wool, which will obviously take more off. I mean, long term wise, you want to do a better job, but you know, I'm just saying, if you don't want to put like six hours into polishing your pipe, I'm going to quickly show you something I can do to this though. Right, see this bit? Now obviously using an angle grinder to polish your entire exhaust like this is impractical, but just to show you what is possible if you kept going. 
So as I say, I realized I didn't need to do this exhaust fully to show you what a transformation can be done using some very simple stuff. As I say, medium, fine wire wool, be careful with it and your batteries and stuff or anything flammable because the thing catches like you wouldn't believe. WD-40 is great for breaking the bonds between the rust and just cleaning it off. And as I say, Autosol is the best metal polish I've ever really used. Um, there may well, very well be better ones out there. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but if I'm gonna do anything metal polish wise, I use this because it just works best. Oh, I didn't check this bit. Let me just see how well this wire wall can get this rust off because this is the worst bit. Let's try some coarser grain wire wall. The answer to that one is it will take it off, but it's very slow. At this sort of level, you're gonna need to sand it. Now I have a video doing a, my exhaust on my DR and I had, did have to sand that back. So I'll link those at the end. Um, if it's that bad, sanding really is your only option. So obviously you've got to take all of this off before you're going to get down to metal that you can polish and blend in with everything else. So if it's that bad, yeah, you are going to have to sand it. Obviously this is where we bring Harpic up. These aren't stainless steel as far as I can tell. So it's not going to be the same deal. I don't advise doing that with these. And really you, you shouldn't use Harpic, which is basically an acid on stainless steel, because what you can do is you can leach, I believe it's the chromium out of them. That means they lose some of their stainless steel effect, which means they can rust quicker. Also, if you were to get the Harpic onto something that's aluminium or one of those sorts of metals, it can be very corrosive towards it. So you really need to make sure that if you do do this on your bike, you really wash it off. All I can add to this is that, as I say, I've used it maybe once a year on my XJ6 headers, the replacements to these, and I have seen no advance in rusting or anything like that. In fact, they just polish up lovely. They don't seem to degrade at all. Yeah, they get a bit dusty looking, but they polish up very quickly. They don't get anywhere as bad as these currently are, but then, you know, they're not nearly as old as these are. So in this case, where these are steel, I wouldn't use Harpic on them myself. And if they were stainless steel, you still shouldn't use Harpic. Even though I have a video saying you can do it, of course you can do it, it's your choice. And I do do it myself, but I would never advise anyone to go and do it. And I think I even said in that video, like, it's your risk to do this. By the way, it is possible to get new ones of these and you can grind out the weld and pop them on and have them welded in, weld them in yourself, um, if you can weld. Oh, that's a very tight. Okay, you could get a TIG torch in there. There's no issue. Someone at home could do that. So as I say, this video idea from the beginning was a bit of a disaster because this exhaust was so bad. But as I say, that's only because I don't want to save it. If you want to save it, you can wire wheel it off. I would sandblast this myself because you can get into all the nooks and crannies and you don't want to leave any rust behind. Um, don't sandblast the pipes, take that all off. Do those as, as I've shown you. If it's really bad, some sandpaper like a, mm, and like a 400, something. You the thing is, you can start lower, but you're going to have to go through other grades to get rid of those scratches and get it back to a nice polish. If you end with like a you know a thousand grit or something like that and some oil or water even you know uh, but i'd rather use oil because there's no risk of it getting rusty you can really smooth them out and polish them up and then yeah as i say the more effort the better the result you'll get and it's a lot harder on the bike i hope there was something useful in there and i'm sorry that the original video idea that i teased didn't work out as i planned i was hoping to have the whole like you know before and after but it's not worth it <laughs> it really isn't one other tip i will mention uh, is that if you have an end cap like this, they're normally just screwed on like one here and two there. When I went to take this off the first time, it was properly stuck. And had I gone for it, they're such small fasteners, I would have snapped them off. Not the end of the world. If you have snapped them off, you can drill them out. You can drill them out as they are now and hopefully get them out. But heat them up. Just get a blowtorch, heat them up, get some penetrating fluid of some sort, a bit WD-40, something I'll actually spray on it. Heat it up a few times till it cooled down. Well, I let them heat up, cool down a couple of times, try and get that differential. Uh, but eventually, they'll just undo. Don't force them, it'll make your life harder. And remember that this is stainless steel, this end cap, this actually is. If you do, well you don't want to overheat this, but if it does get a bit of tar uh, tarnishing on it from the heat, you can just polish that off in the same way that you're polishing these, uh, the, the, main, the main pipes. So as I say, for the people who wanted this information, you now have that information. I'm sorry it's such an unsatisfying end result. It's not like, I can't, that's not thumbnail worthy.
If you can glance your arse cheek on the like button on the way out, I'd appreciate it. Huge thanks to my Patreon supporters. Please check out links in the description to join that to get videos early. Also get on the Discord, other things like that. But I need to end this video now, so I'm going now. Bye.